the expanding universe model is what eventually won out because it fit our observations better. It fit the maths all checked out. Wrong. No, the expanding universe model does not fit our data and it hasn't fit our data for a very long time. But rather than discard the theory, they, there have been numerous attempts to salvage this theory by creating hypothetical entities and processes. Since the Hubble telescope, we have known that the galaxy data does not match the expanding universe model. Well, so one test in particular is that in an expanding universe, the surface brightness of a galaxy, so the amount of light you get per some unit area, decreases with distance. And also distant objects actually appear larger than they should because they used to be closer when the light was first emitted. Whereas in a static universe that's not expanding with tired light causing redshift, the surface brightness should be constant because distant galaxies will be fainter, but they'll also appear smaller to us as well as they get more distance. So that ratio of brightness to area stays the same. That's not what we see in our observations of the distant universe, though. Instead, our observations fit the expanding universe model, and so that was wrong, wrong, wrong. Now, Dr. Becky is right about what we should see with the Tolman surface brightness test in a expanding versus a non-expanding universe, but she is completely wrong about our actual observations. The Tolman surface brightness test has been a great confirmation of this static universe model because what we do see is that the distant galaxies maintain a constant surface brightness, and that is totally incompatible with the expanding universe model. But I don't just doubt the distances, the high redshifts of these galaxies, but also the calculation of these impossibly high masses as well. I've made a whole video on this before if you want to check it out, but essentially you have to convert from how bright a galaxy is to how much mass in stars is there by assuming you know how many of each size and type of star there is in that galaxy that are giving out a certain amount of light each. We assume that spread of the type and size of stars is the same as that we see in the Milky Way and in nearby galaxies, but that might be a really bad assumption of what the very early universe was actually like. And it turns out if you just tweak that spread of stars slightly, just to have a few more, you know, bigger, more massive stars that give out a little bit more light, then the galaxies are no longer overmassive and the whole problem goes away. No, the whole problem doesn't go away. In fact, there are several problems that don't go away. One of them is that those galaxies shouldn't be there at all, according to the Big Bang model. According to the Big Bang model, it would take these galaxies billions of years to form, and yet there they are, right at the beginning of the universe. So there's no solution to that problem right now. And in addition to that, th the galaxies that we're seeing if we add in the expansion calculation, these galaxies are impossibly small and impossibly bright. And here's Eric Lerner telling us something about that. In the first episode of this series, we showed how the new images from the James Webb Space Telescope and older images from the Hubble Space Telescope both showed that the images of galaxies, as we see them at large redshifts at high distances, are too small for the formula of the Big Bang expanding universe hypothesis. Using those formula, the Big Bang says that these galaxies, which are as massive and luminous as the Milky Way galaxy that we live in, were tiny, hundreds of times smaller in radius than in the present day Milky Way. But the news gets worse for the Big Bang because it isn't just data from the JWST that's causing the problem. Almost every day there's data from other telescopes that's making these problems worse. And in the case of the size data, Starting in June of this year, there was data from Earth-based telescope called ALMA, which is a huge array of radio telescopes in the Atacama Desert in Chile, that showed there is an independent measure of radius that contradicts the predictions of the Big Bang. Now, if you calculate from the angular radius, that's what's observed, to the radius of the galaxies, the linear radius in kiloparsecs, that they should have if the universe is not expanding, and redshift and distance are linearly proportional at all redshift, and you get the green dots. And as you can see, in each case, the green dots are comfortably above the minimum radius that these galaxies must have. 
But if you use the Big Bang Expanding Universe Formula, which, as I've explained in previous videos, includes this peculiar uh, optical illusion that is caused by the galaxies being closer when they emitted their light, the galaxies are calculated to be two to four times smaller than the minimum radius, and that's those blue dots. So I call these the impossible galaxies. Now, if we just take away the expansion calculation and consider this a static universe, then those galaxies are not impossibly small. They're average galaxies. And the, the data with the angular diameter also fits better if we just take away the calculation for expansion. So I hope that Dr. Becky and other astrophysicists who support the Big Bang model will take the time to really evaluate the data and respond to scientists like Eric Lerner who have presented the evidence that contradicts the expanding universe model and adjust your model accordingly. If you want to hear more about the big problems with the Big Bang, then check out my other video on this topic or check out Eric Lerner's channel, LPP Fusion. He has tons of videos on this topic. And if there are any scientists who have refutations to what he has said in those videos, I would love to hear the scientific arguments against his presentation. Thank you. Mm -hmm.